We are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P-Car Talk. All right. Welcome to another episode of P-Car Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. And our TikTok sessions are over. We were watching TikToks for an hour, so we're finally going to get started. It's all business um, here. Let's go ahead and thank our people. Let's do it. Do so it. We got Matt with no last name, Leslie N, Chris S, Steve J, Carl K, Scott H, Sandra A, Ken S, Javid V, Richard B, Aaron L, Matthew G, Matthew M, Sean H, and Nick F. Nice. Yeah, we have some new members, right? Like people joining would come up to us, yep. tell us they're, they're joining, they're doing stuff. I, we appreciate that. Um, rally season, you know, people are getting excited. Um, we're coming back on every week. Going to have, you know, Ren Sports coming up. Yep. A lot of buzz is in the air. So, um, you know, if you're going to become a member, why not now? Get in there. Support your boys. How do they do that, Aaron? No, uh, They go to patreon.com forward slash pcartalk. And then they choose one of the options. Exactly. Then they're done. Don't be zero. Be hero. Please help us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, All right. God. Thanks, comrade. And then big shout out to Sonderworks sponsoring still and been going strong sponsoring us all year um, with their uh, tool bags that have been macrameed and we're sending those out. Um, if you don't know who they are, I'm surprised because then you haven't been listening to us because they are in Charlotte. They do massive amounts of work on all different types of cars, water cooled, air cooled, builds, maintenance, you name it, it happens. Um, they're working on a friend's car right now, redoing the entire interior on a, on a Wysock, uh, edition car, um, G body car. So we're excited to see that definitely give Sonder works a shout out. Um, and get some work done with them because uh, they like supporting us and uh, we like it when you support people who support us, right? Yep, support. Yep, people helping people. As Vince Vaughn says in Whitting Singer, people helping people. Holy shirts and pants, if you get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's get rolling. So, big shout out to everybody who came to the sessions. Scott for hosting. Arnage Motorsports bought some cars out. Um, really, really good turnout. If you missed it, um, sorry about your luck. Maybe you can catch one in 12 calendar months um, because that's probably when the next one's going to be. So I think this is only going to be an annual thing. Um, but huge, huge turnout. Um, people from all over, like surrounding areas, came out um, and brought cars and all different makes and models. Obviously, the display, the marquee was Porsche that night. Um, so, you know, people brought their own rides because, you know, not everybody has a Porsche, not everybody's fortunate. And, um, you know, they just wanted to see what else was out there. Like, they wanted to see what was in the Porsche world. So they drove. And it was cool to see other cars there, you know. It was cool to see, you know, the the whole block lined up with a bunch of different cars that people showed up to come look yep. at Porsches. So that I thought that was pretty neat as well. Evos, McLarens. Yeah. Lambos. Yeah. Sco- you know, a couple Scuds showed up. Um, you know, just all types of stuff, you know. A lot of enthusiast stuff, you know, like Z06 Vets, you know. You had Safari land cruisers there a little bit of everything so i'm excited for the next one um i don't know if we're going to be involved in every single one obviously we were pulled in for our porsche expertise could we even call it expertise i don't even know if you would call it that um, somebody's an expert somewhere yeah not, none of us though um so topics 73 career rsr known as the r7 um yeah. if you didn't know on the other side of the planet over uh in england um, Bonham's auction, Goodwood Revival, just mm-hmm. happened. So there's auction houses that are there. So if you're not familiar with this car, I'm going to give you a little bit of history lesson. So this car is a one of three um, factory works RSR. So if you're driving, sitting in the office, don't have an opportunity to look at it, I'm going to go ahead and paint a vivid picture of this car. And if you know anything about Porsche, you're going to know exactly what car I'm talking about. Um, it's the one with the fanned tail where it goes fender duck tail. It looks like on the back, it looks kind of wonky, but it's all the way on the back side on the fenders and it goes all the way across. It has a big duck tail. It c- surrounds the whole car and it's painted in the martini livery. Um, of the three cars, this, uh, this factory works car best it ever did was fourth at, uh, the 1973 Le Mans 24 hours, which isn't too bad because the first, the one, two, three were 12 cylinder prototype cars. <laughs> it's that podium. 
So this is an, a three liter flat six that was producing 300 horsepower and came in fourth place. So not too bad in 1973. Yeah, not too bad at all. Um, so what makes this car so unique is a lot of times these race cars, they never get out of, I guess, curators' hands, meaning like Porsche themselves or people who curate for Porsche that have big time museums and things like that. These, these things usually get locked up and, you know, you go to these events and you go to museums and you're like, man, I wonder who owns that car or who owns this. And usually they're donated or there's, you know, that Porsche owns them or some huge, huge collection. Um, the fact that this was out in public auction is is rare to begin with because, again, it's a one of three. It actually has lineage from racing. Um, so what did, it, did one of the old racers, like, just decide to buy it? or? So and... the history behind the car in 2000, early 2000s, the car had thought to have disappeared, that it was in an accident um, somewhere in South America, then that they believed that the car was parted out. Um, as far as interest goes, I don't think a lot of people were chasing race car heritage the way they do nowadays yeah. um so i think a lot of people were just okay with that and not really confirming it and following up if this car actually disappeared or what have you um but apparently it didn't disappear um i guess it was in owned by somebody in south america then it made its way back got resto uh restored uh brought back to its glory of basically racing um there's a video that the the good goodwood has a channel so they did like a review on the car too which is pretty cool and they drove it around their own private track there and um it's kind of neat to see obviously we know it's a race car but everything was just done to to make the car go racing i mean think about the time it was 1973 like they basically had like a sticky note of like for what the switch did on fan on you know simple stuff not all this high tech stuff that they have nowadays and yeah. um there's something something nice about that something cool about that um i haven't seen this car in person but i've seen a lot of videos i've seen a lot of photos but on you might, might know where it'll turn up soon yeah yeah i bet um probably see it in a couple of weeks in monterey at laguna i'm sure but uh anyways like the car did sell um Obviously, the pricing uh, is kept under wraps for uh, privacy of the new buyer. Yeah. Um, but the book auction estimate was between four point six million and seven point one million is what the estimate is what they think it would have done. Is that under British pounds or is that no? That's ch- that's US? that's the exchange rate to to dollars. Um, so that's the actual and actually like our dollar stronger than their pound right now. I think I just looked. The conversion rate is our dollar twenty five is to was what we have to one British oh, yeah, pound sell right now. Yeah. yeah, they're under that. They're probably like, thanks, Brexit. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to them. That their their uh, currency took a dump because of that. Because um, it used to be the other way around. Oh, yeah, um, big time. But anyways, it's one of the three surviving race cars from the works program. And the significance of that is that's from 1973. These cars were Porsche at that time. You got to think about it. We're still, I mean, they, they had raced some 356s, obviously, in the 50s and the 60s, but they were really still coming into their heyday still, into the racing scene and racing higher horsepower cars, not, not just trying to win their class. Like, they were trying to make shoot for overall wins. You got to think about it. This was the time of the 917 as well. So, like, the 911 was being carried up and boosted up, and they were also racing that car as well. So, this was a very early time in Porsche, so... They didn't f- have a bunch of race cars like they do nowadays. They didn't have the firepower and the financial firepower to be- build a million race cars. So this thing was beat up, hammered, reused over and over again, like crashed, fixed, all of those things. So it has all that stuff. Do we th- <clears throat> did this get sold to Jerry at one point in time? Do we know? I didn't go that far back. Because um, it, got, it, got, it was in some legal battles. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he had owned it at some point. Um Jerry has it says U.S. collector is what I was reading on it. And yeah. Then, and then they um, had to bring in Norbert Singer to identify it as being legit. Yeah. Well, if you're an avid listener of the show, who knows how many episodes now. I'm just going to go on a year, year basis. Yeah. Probably two years ago, Jerry had a, a very unique speedster he ended up buying. And then after 
I guess it was going to restoration, found out it wasn't 100% legit. There were parts missing, and it was represented, misrepresented, and there was a huge legal battle with that. And there was some czar that lived in the Azores that owned the car or something, and there was some back and forth. And I guess the point of that is if Jerry was buying this car, I wouldn't be surprised if there was he was vetting it or right. had it vetted. So the, uh, the lineage is like the, the race team owner bought it originally. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I guess it stayed with, they went to somebody else and then they stayed in that with those guys, an Italian person, an Italian collector for like 30 years. Yeah. So they just went, disappeared there, showed up in France and then made its way to the U.S. Yeah. So it just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> They don't, and that's, that's kind of how that's that's all that they know. As far yeah, as so it's goes. the Martar- Martini livery number forty six car. So it's got that wrap around duck tail on that car. What are your thoughts on this car? Like, I mean, just like let's go from like it's one of the most copied ones. That has to be. Yeah, least, like, like from an aesthetic there. standpoint, like the first time I can remember the first time I saw this car. Um, but obviously, I want I want to hear your opinion first. I'm like, what do you think of like the arrow or the way the thing looks or looks, any of that looks, stuff? It looks so wild to me, like crazy that they they went so far with the uh, with the duck tail going so far out. It looks so wide. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it just paved the way for everything they do with the RSR program today. But and then the, the it looks kind of wonky, right? Yeah, it like, does look a little. It looks like instead of being aesthetically pleasing, they were just trying to get every bit of yeah tire to the ground at all times exactly they were like hey if there's a fender can we push some air on it to get some more like downforce here on this and um that's exactly what that looks like right like it, it's very rudimentary looking where somebody was kind of like look that's before we're, like scoops were discovered yeah, like we're we're, we're losing we're losing air over these fenders because we're trying to slip through the air instead of have the air push the car down which yeah. we need um it's i think almost kind of I've learned to appreciate the car from like a long time ago when I first saw the car. When I first saw the car, I thought it looked very strange and I I really didn't like it to be honest with you. Like and, and I'm talking like me fifteen years ago when I saw pictures yeah. of this car. I was like, what the hell is that like that was what they raced? Like what why? Like I mean I understood it, but I was like, Man, that just looks so strange and you know, and I guess that just shows you they're, they were trying stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know so what I mean? You look at the car, there's no, like, scoop at all, except for the front, like, where the oil cooler and the yeah. front and the center where are. But, uh, I mean, other than that, they just need surface area to, to have downforce. Yeah. And again, they weren't, you know, per- Porsche was pretty old. There wasn't a lot of funding there. There was, I mean, I don't want to say old, young, I guess is what I'm looking yeah. for, is, like, <laughs> what I meant to say. And young in the in the racing world right like they didn't have a a lot of clout i mean they they were making a noise but they were no powerhouse yet um they were trying to be and um you could see that they were trying things with their racing program and this is exactly what this is and like over time i've learned to appreciate that body design because you know it's almost like more prototype ish looking right it is yeah that that was the reason they had to race exactly to those cars i I just look at that yeah through that so they couldn't race in their glass because of being prototype. yeah a prototype because they couldn't get it homologated prior. So that's why they took fourth. Like everything as a whole. But I mean, they probably would have won their class oh, for sure if they took fourth overall, right? In the prototype class. I mean, imagine if they had turbos at this time. Yeah, like they might have. Well, that's a, that's the wild thing about this is when I when I actually did a little bit more research, thinking about this thing having three hundred horsepower, like that's that's a really low number. But I guess if you think about the seventies and think about how light this chassis was. It probably was a, it was a pretty good animal out there. Yeah, I mean it's not type fan designed or yeah. anything like that. It's normal. Yeah, normal functioning designer. What would be normal functioning design with fiberglass everywhere? Yeah. So, like, next question: Do you think the Bonhams range? Do you feel that's a fair number? Do you feel it's low? Do you feel it's high? What do you? Uh, how do you feel? No idea that? how to gauge a race car with, with. Well, I mean, it's got some prominence in one Le Mans. I mean, I mean, it's got a lot. I mean, it's actually three. the most recognizable one. Like, I think anybody the, in the, the Porsche world. Is yeah, a thing. Yeah, I think. And I think it being it, off the rate. Right there with a golf car. Yeah. has to be. 
Yeah, I mean, this has to be one of the, the more significant 9 11. For being a 9 right? 11, yeah. yeah. For, well, it has to be top tier 9 11, but significant in the race car. Yeah, exactly. Stack. And think about, and then, and then the third factor with that is as a collector who has money for this, the eligibility to buy the car, meaning like, not all of those race cars that you see at the Porsche Museum obviously are not for sale. Yeah. Like, oh, you can't just go scoop up a K- K- uh, K3 Le Mans winning Kramer car. Yeah. You know, those people, collectors own those cars, you know. Oh, and the eligibility to take that back to Le Mans and run the historics. No, I don't know if you would. Yeah. But you could. Yeah. You probably could go. I bet somebody would go. I mean, if you have that kind of money, maybe just like as a oh, that would be a little, as a show and display. Like what, yeah. yeah. Like type of meal uh, deal. I mean, Bruce Meyer, he owns the the Wrights Brothers car that yeah. won, you know, like until somebody like that wants to sell, like there's only a handful of these cars that have that kind of prominence that have that. So I, I think that price is justified. Um, like you always say, show me another one. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to find another one like this. It wore, wore this as got livery. Nope. You know. Or competed or won yeah. its class or did anything like this. Now, one of its sister cars is the Brumos Livery 73 RSR. Like, that car is out there and obviously owned by someone. Um, that's a cool car, too, right? And yeah. uh, I think a lot of people who in the Porsche world recognize that car as well. But um, I think from a works program, I think everybody understands what yeah, that, what that this car, what this car is, the yeah. 73 RSR, you know, nicknamed the, you know, the R7. Um I just think it was pretty wild. And and of all those cars, I think this is the only car that ran that funky ducktail. Yeah, it is. So that I can recall. Yeah, same. Yeah, but I, I think it's justified. I don't think we'll ever know what the number was on that car. I mean I well, guess I mean they just discovered the well the Carrera R S, the ducktail mm-hmm. at that point in yeah. the same year. Yeah, because they were and homologating they were and yeah. selling them to the public. You know, there's a lightweight version, there was a touring version, you know, there's only a handful of those seventy three RSRs that are out there. Or I should say RS. Yeah, they just discovered They did that the RS version. Through their wind tunnel testing. So I guess they were like, well, if that works, then more yeah. ducktail works even better. Yeah, so. get some more out here. All right, Porsche finally podiums. Um, Porsche, uh, the number six car podium, that Fuji. Um, yeah, they led for like three hours and 48 minutes or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, that, yeah, that was crazy. Toyota wasn't going to be ni- denied a one-two at their own track at Fuji. They were probably doing some witchcraft there. Like Van Thor was trying to make that happen, though. Yeah, he drove. Larry drove really well. Good friend of ours. If you haven't listened to our podcast with him, he's been on the show before. I'm glad they have a little bit of momentum to build on. Um, I kind of want to talk on this subject a little bit, just because it's obviously their race team has had some troubles this year, but uh, this is a, a little bit of glimmer on on a dodgy season i I guess to to put it lightly um do you think we've talked about this before but with this little bit of momentum is this is this something like hey maybe we're starting to figure something out or is it because like you said they look strong they led for a very very long time um or is it more of just kind of like man we just found the track that this car (laughs) car is supposed to run on Maybe. And now we're going to learn telemetry from this track to say, okay, now we, how are we going to tune this car move, like from this data that they maybe gather from here to run on other tracks that are totally different to say, okay, we were strong here. How do we change this for other tracks? You know, maybe that's what happens here. I don't know. I think know. we got a power figured out. That's what I think. There's the no battery way. situation. Yeah, there's no way that, that we're that dominant coming out. Like you saw that you see the one clip that's going around everywhere with, uh, Larry coming up on that Toyota car, like, yeah, middle of just passes just him, yeah, slingshots by and you know, drafts and, and goes by him, yeah, and then the ability to keep a lead for almost you know, more, more than half the race, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a positive thing, right? Um, so hopefully next year moving forward, like, there'll be continued momentum with that, probably uh, using those new Cayman batteries. <laughs> Speaking of batteries, yeah, um. Got some funny stuff to talk about that. Um, yeah, so Porsche Penske in the off season. Let's talk about predictions for next year okay. with them. Then, um, obviously, these are just our guesses based off of what we've seen this year. What's going to move forward? Um, what do we think is going to happen next year? Come, you know, f- let's fast forward. It's 
it's September right now. We don't have too many more months. You know, we have a we have a Thanksgiving and a Christmas, and then we're at 24 hours. Like we we've we've fast forwarded Daytona. Like, well, what's your expectations? They better you know? win. That's my expectations. <laughs> Just win. Be there. Uh, let's see it win. <laughs> they better. W- they be- <laughs> That's like a cold trickle. Like <laughs> they better win. That's it. The only option. To win. Those tires will hold. I got special tires on there, Van Thor. Exactly. They will hold. Um, I think with it, with our newfound lead for this last race, and then we'll see what happens in the, in the other ones. Um, and with the driver time too. Like the drivers have finally got a good. Almost a year in the car and figuring that how out. How it behaves. Figure it out, yeah. Figure out how it behaves, how it doesn't behave. And yeah. Like we said, the battery stuff. I think it's got to be a stronger, but I mean, Porsche's got to be aiming to win. Yeah. Everything. Well, they win that. They aim for that every year. How much do you think this podium three changes the off season morale? Is this, is this, it's gonna be something. I mean, well, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, he's so down. I mean, well, I'm, I'm saying, like, this was something. huge, right? For them as a team. Like, on the on the radar, this is going to go like as a minor blip from but from a team morale standpoint because it was going to be even though they're short off seasons, it was going to be a very long off season of yeah. get get this stuff fixed or we're going to have even more problems and heads are going to roll if they're not already rolling behind the, behind the curtain. Yeah, this this almost kind of says after all of the things that they've been through with all of the issues that they've had, you know, one thing after another. And I know it's not an overall win, but it's still being on the podium and the success that they had during the race. I think it definitely has to at least relieve a little bit of pressure in the off season in the pressure cooker because they were certainly in it all year long. And in each rate, each passing race with each failure of that race, probably just you know times the pressure. It just got worse. Yeah, because you're you're always under the gun to win, 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 especially in the, uh, with our brand. Um, and I did see it because I, you know, follow, follow Larry, and I saw that he took an actual vacation this time on on his little, you know, time off. Versus, yeah. you know, yeah, like just does. training yeah. nonstop, right? Like, and just being. So maybe that helped. Maybe they were just trying to like do whatever they could just to reset and. Yeah, come, shake it up, right? Like, like the, let's mindset. get out of the funk. Let's do something different. Like, that's probably the like. I think it definitely is a huge, huge internal win for morale for them i i'm excited for the next season i was excited for this season what was the um yeah i don't recall i can't remember what the the temperatures were in fuji but was it any cooler than it has been in the past I, I wasn't paying attention to that i just wondered if that may have been helping with the battery stuff or i mean it's entirely possible but you know this time of the year even there is it's pretty humid and pretty warm, warm and yeah. yeah it's really hot um that's what my assumption is but but huge, huge thing. I wanted to point that out. Congrats to our guy, Van Thor, um, for fighting all race long to make that, like, because that means something to them. You know, it, overall, obviously, they're not fighting for a championship. Uh, they know that. They're not in position for that. Um, but that's a huge morale win, I think, internally. And for Team uh, Porsche Penske, you know, for all of them to sit around. Now, it's almost one of those kind of like, okay, the car can do it, right? Yeah, like, it's almost one of those, like... Yeah. Because, it. you know, in, 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 in confidence in their own, what the other drivers and, you know, they'll never openly speak about it, but the conversations that they have behind closed doors between each other, they're, who knows what they're saying, right? They're probably like, dude, are you having these problems in your car? Like, my car feels like a POS, dude. Like, I do this and I don't even know all the, all the lights shut off and I don't even know what's going on half the time in this thing. They're like, oh, dude, mine's not like that at all. Mine's awesome. And they're like, oh, for real? They're like, we got the, we got the, I want, I want the setup like theirs. Yeah. I was like, we got the JV squad car. Like, that sucks. Um, so now they're sitting around probably having that conversation. They're like, bro, it could do it, man. I didn't think it could do it, but it could do it. Like, oh, you got to, here's the hack. You know, maybe they have some internal hack now. They're like, oh, yeah. We weren't putting the accelerator all the way down. That was the, no, that's, <laughs> that that's was the, the problem, bro. It's the plus button when, uh, when, uh, yeah. Somebody, some funny guy, put a plastic piece behind the accelerator so it only got 90% throttle. Who's the funny guy? <laughs> yeah, it turns out it doesn't regenerate if it's not 100% throttle and then break. <laughs> oh, just jokes, just jokes. But, um, yeah, exciting stuff coming out of that camp. Um, one more thing. Hopefully we see some first and second places. That'd be great. Yeah, I think... Uh, 
a better sh- a better showing at Daytona would be really nice. Um, I mean, a podium, a win, well, that, something. Then the other thing would be like that Penske continues to fund it. That, I mean, if they weren't, if they don't win or or do well, like why would you want to continue to? Well, yeah, I mean, to put money in a program. One, one year out of the gate, but like, I don't think they're going to dump on it. But I think if they have a a sophomore year that looks like this year, I I don't think Roger's going to be around for much longer. You know, supporting that. Hey, let's let's race till we figure it out. Type of situation. Yeah. He he doesn't seem like a very patient man when it comes to things like that. Where it's kind of like, all right, cool, like super laid back, man. Hey, if this takes five years, man, I'm all in. Let's go. I'm 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 here for the long haul, brother. Like, let's do it. Like, just just take your time and collect the data and let's figure it out and do it the right way. Let's do it the right way, brother. You guys did pretty well. Yeah. Pretty well. Hey, I'm hey. Long as you're improving every week, I'm proud of you guys, man. I'm proud of you. That's all I can do, right? Right? Bullshit. I'm sure Roger's in there throwing stuff at people like, all right, I'm old, and my cardiologist says I can't get my blood pressure up. But the next time I come in here, I'm coming in here with a 38 special, and I'm going to have it to the side, and that you know what that means, kill shot. <laughs> Someone's getting it. Um, Start the song all of a sudden. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I really I, – and here's the thing. I just hope – I guess – my hopes after this year is like so far down, like my expectation. I just want them to be in a position where they can fight for the win. I don't need them winning. I just, I mean, I want them to, don't get me wrong, but I want them in a position where it's the last hour of the race and they're not 27 laps down. That's where I want them at. Yes. You know, like that kind of situation. I want them to be like, Hey, they're on the lead lap and they're six seconds behind the lead. And, and, We've we've gone down into the critical less than an hour, like on the on the endurance race. Like yeah. that's what I want. Like I want that excitement. I want those guys out there, uh, the opportunity to fight for that win. Like that's what I want to see. I don't want to see this. Oh yeah, car number six gets retired at hour twelve for a battery uh, explosion. You know, somebody spilled Dr Pepper in the car. It's over. You know, stuff like that. The buns are all sticky. Yeah, oh, I don't know how it works. I can't hear anything. <laughs> But um, probably mezzo next, more likely. Yeah. So next, uh, speaking of battery, let's segue right into battery stuff. Uh, Porsche sure. Taycan and Audi e-tron uh, recall is in effect for battery sealant issues. Another recall for the Taycan. Seems to be a reoccurring theme. That's yeah, it's a prototype, you know. Apparently, um, if you have one of those and you don't know, now you know. Um, it's, they're still figuring this stuff out, meaning like stuff, I mean EV stuff, yeah. right? So there's that. Um, do you think these multitude of r- recalls, like obviously the, the Taycan's had more than one, um, do you think this has any effect on potential buyers within Porsche or outside of Porsche that are coming to the brand when the Macan EV and the Boxster EV come around? Do you think this makes people have a little bit more reluctancy to to make a move because hey you know are they going to be like let's get them let's let's let them get out there see if they grenade or if they work and then then let's get in do you think it has that effect or do you think this has no effect i don't think they care i mean because all cars have recalls yeah i don't think i don't think it's but i don't think it's big enough where it makes makes a deal yet i mean yeah. and they probably have to understand it's their first go go around with the cars it's not like tesla didn't everything go on yeah on absolutely i agree yeah there was there for a while i think i every video i was seeing on instagram for a while when they were just showing teslas on fire I yeah that was, i mean that if you're gonna be in the, the first adopters then i guess that's one of those things you're you're kind of yeah accepting but, but no. i mean this technology's been out for a little bit right like so it's kind of yeah but yeah but again it has been out for a little bit but it hasn't ever been tested to all these that's a good you know, point to this massive people, that's a good point. to the scale and then all longevity the, yeah, right longevity as well yeah. that's a good point that's a good point um i think um i'm kind of on the same page with you but i kind of disagree a little bit i think i think some people that are really gung-ho to make a move on a car uh like an ev or something like that i i think there has to be some thought process behind it to say man look what's happening with the Taycan. you know not that it's a, a pile of junk by any means but like the fact that 
you know, you could be driving and could spontaneously combust in a fire. That, that, that could happen. <laughs> I mean, I mean that is a risk factor. Like, that... The likelihood is low, um, obviously, if it's going to be mass produced. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I just... Uh, I wonder if Porsche will institute some type of, like, not a Helon, but something where, like, fire extinguisher type thing. Because yeah. they're EV cars. That, that's something that safety-wise that they... Yeah, they like almost like in race cars where it has to have mm-hmm. a fire suppression system involved yeah. in it. Because it's the, because it's the, um, yeah. an EV. That goes back to, I think, what... Should be a safety thing. Yeah, like a national safety highway, whatever, the NAFTA yeah. or whatever. Um, well, that's for our country, but worldwide safety, who knows? Um, I mean, that would be a great idea. You but mentioned fire, and I was like, oh, yeah, who's going to have special fire extinguishers all the time? Not everybody. Yeah. But if they were built in, yeah. but then, then the car, is it is it... It's already heavy. It's not like yeah. that's going to be... Or is it game over, though, if that thing comes out, though, is my point. Like, it gets all into the system. Airbags like, explode, that... it's pretty much total car, right? So... So yeah, I just meant thing. like if there was like a fire in it, or or a suspected fire, I should say, and yeah. then it like drowned the system basically, then the car's like a total loss. I don't know. I'm thinking outside the box, but um, I don't know. I just I don't know if it makes anybody second guess that. Like I do. I I think it does make people second guess it. Like and and you know what? There's a lot of Porsche people that obviously that are critical thinkers. Um, you know, wherever their business has taken them in their lives they're successful for that and a lot of those things assimilate um so because of that that might have some critical thinking and risk taking that they may not want one of those cars because they think that 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 might be an issue for them be like hey let them let them get it sorted out it's almost kind of like you know the guy's like i don't need to buy a plasma right away and i yeah i got faith that they're going to figure this thing out and they're going to be cheaper and they're going to get better and who knows um, maybe they'll stop making them all together, right? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they're going to go that direction since they're putting all their, their eggs in the all full EV thing. So. Yeah, and then we've, do- we've touched on this before, too. Like, what is the EV used car market? Like, I guess we can kind of look to Tesla in that way. Like, we can see some of those older Teslas and what their value is, and yeah. they're, they're not worth anything. Well, like, they're newer ones. They have slash prices, so... Yeah. Well, I think it's just now, I think you kind of have to be competitive, right? So from a standpoint, I just meant like more long-term. We talked about it a little bit on the last show, but we were joking around about horsepower. Like when we're like, oh, how about these things when they're 10 years old and you've got 1,500 horsepower and you've got these, you know, idiot teenagers driving them around. Well, how about just like when you just want to buy used one of these things and, and it's only 400 horsepower and then you know, battery degradation, do we run into that thing? And now now we're cycling batteries, you know, like, hey, I, car's good to go, uh, I'll sell it to you for 20 but you need to buy a $20,000 battery, too, for it. Um, like, that kind of stuff's already happened. There's tons of companies that have sprung up third party that are re reusing old Tesla batteries and, like, basically refurbishing them. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it anywhere you've ever shopped before. If you've been on Amazon, it's like, do you want to buy new or do you want to buy a refurbished one? You're like... I'm sure everybody's kind of like me on the most part. You're like, I don't want a refurbished unit. Like, I, that thing's going to break. <laughs> like, I think people are going to feel the same way about those batteries unless there's a massive price difference, right? Where somebody like, eh, I'll take a risk because I don't want to spend 20 for a battery, but I'll spend seven. They have a $13,000 discount. Is it worth the risk, right? Um, that's a whole nother topic we'll get into at some other time. Let's let's take a little bit of a break. And then uh, before we go, because I think there's people probably listening to us. And, and I thought about this last week and I was like, oh, catch us, you know, back on where we're, you know, on the private yeah, channel where I'll we're at. You. Why don't you e- explain that real fast for okay. some of the like listeners? Like when I say, OK, we're going to be right on break and catch the rest of the show here. I thought about that the other time. So, like, let's tell the people no, who aren't there. members who want to listen to the rest of the show where they could listen to the rest of the show if they became a hero. So, if you're a hero, a.k.a. Hero. Remember, yeah. Um, so I'll give you that, the back story about it. So, we, we were doing the show kind of long in, in, in the first place. And then to, to get back to the, the members, we figured we would just do a, a portion only for the members. And then the way that worked was going to be two separate podcasts. But then, then we figured that's going to get confusing, so we didn't do that. So the uh, whole 
technique behind it was we're just going to put it on Patreon. So the full episode, I don't, it's not just the half, but it's the whole episode. It goes on Patreon. You can download the app on the phone. It's available on both Android and, I, and iPhone. You just log into your Patreon. It's a post. You can click play. It plays right within there. And then you can listen to the whole episode versus just half of it on uh, iTunes and yep. wherever else it goes out. And the more you know. And yep. I, thank you for that explanation. So catch us over there, heroes. See ya. Yep. All right. Welcome to the after party. Um, the after party. That sounds good. Yeah, I like that. <laughs>